everyone. Um, my name's Laura Kenwright. I work for Spread the Word, London's writer development agency. And it's my absolute pleasure to be talking with Laurent Marchif, um today, who was highly commended um, in our Life Writing Prize this year for her fantastic piece, For the Flesh is Sour. For the Flesh is Sour is set within the backdrop of the Gilets Jaunes riots, chronicles the aftermath of the death of a grandparent, sexuality, and experiencing life through video images. Now, prize judge Kerry Hudson said, I was particularly impressed with the narrative's ability to turn more familiar themes on their heads and to make us think differently about universal experiences. Laurent lives in London. Her work has appeared in the London Magazine, the Mechanics Institute Review and the TLS. She is a past winner of the French Escale des Lettres. She was recently long listed for the BBC Short Story Prize. And last year she was shortlisted for this prize, the uh, Life Writing Prize and the London Short Story Prize last year as well. She holds an MA in creative writing from Birkbeck and she also runs a circus. Um, welcome, Laurent. Hello. Hello. Um, huge congratulations. How does it feel to be highly commended in the Life Writing Prize? Uh, it's really nice. Um, yeah, it feels great, um, especially seeing this is a piece that I think has had several incarnations. I've rewritten it a few times. And I think this version is definitely the version where I feel like the piece found its feet and found, you know, the right tone to talk about subjects which are a little bit difficult. So it's really nice to feel like this translated into, you know, what the jury's thoughts and stuff. So yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it seems to be, because I've read quite a bit of your work now and it seems to be you do um, like to explore themes in really unusual ways. Um, and sort of turn things sort of on their heads a little. Would you say that's something that you like to do? Yeah, I think I think I really like um, exploring really dark subjects in ways that are sort of funny um, or like fairly lighthearted. Um, and I usually know when it's autobiographical writing, I usually know I'm onto something when I find myself say at a party and I'm a little bit drunk and then I will tell a group of people about a horrible experience that I've had and they all laugh. And that's when I know that the story has the potential to, you know, convey something, but using a tone that's interesting and keeps people engaged. And I quite like this contrast. Yeah, I do as well. Fantastic. So you touched on this just earlier um, in saying that For the Flesh is Sour has had quite a few um, incarnations. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and sort of how you came to write this piece and why you wanted to write it? Yeah. Um, so th this is a piece that I wrote uh, last year after my grandmother passed away. And I think I was a little bit numb from everything and the whole Gilets jaunes riot thing was happening. And when I came back to London, I started writing this piece. But I think at first I wasn't sure what it is I was writing as I was writing it. So I just kind of, you know, got all the words out. And at this time, I tried to write it in the third person. I never thought I would write it in a life writing, you know, aspect. I, I, I was more interested in like putting it on a fictional level along with other pieces that I've written because I'm quite interested in like blending the kind of like genres of what's real, what's fictional. So that's how it started. It started as this third person short story thing. And I think I was struggling in finding the light in the piece in this format. Um, it was just something fairly like, you know, sad and everything and death. And I felt like it's not really what I wanted to do, especially because the piece is about my grandmother. And, you know, I didn't want to pay my personal homage to her by writing something that would be dark and relentless and just 
so so yeah so then i rewrote it trying to find yeah little bits of light and of life and like a see-through um line to the piece that would be reflective of my grandmother who was someone you know very strong and full of energy and i think that's where the piece settled in this kind of like demi-teinte um, like you know half light half darkness um which i was quite happy with would you like to share some of it with us now? Uh, yes. Um, um, I'd just like to mention um, that there are some um, quite explicit adult themes in this. So if you feel that that might um, offend you, it might be best to turn off for a little bit. Um, um, but yeah, without further ado, Lorraine, if you'd like to read from For the Flesh is Sour, that would be fantastic. Um, yes, so I'm going to read from the beginning of the piece. <laughs> The video is small and pixelated. An animated blue alien with lips of gold, fucking a minotaur. A cartoon girl dressed as a student, surrounded by a group of beer-bellied men. A CGI woman, blindfolded and tied down with ropes, swallowing a green monster cock. A caption flashes on the screen. Your stepbrother will make you beg for it. And then, Play this game and try not to come. I rub my eyes and wonder if people are really into this. These days, most porn videos seem to have the word incest in the title. Like everyone worldwide is suddenly turned on by interfilial gangbangs, by stepsisters and stepdaughters dressing up as cheerleaders and throwing orgies. Why am I seeing this ad? Does the internet think I am a horny teenager? Is it a virus? If so, where did I get it? More importantly, am I turned on? Should I not be turned on? After 29 seconds, the ad has run its course and the screen freezes on the click to play button. I do not click to play. I adjust the pillows behind my back, poke a knee out of the duvet to catch the gray Saturday sun. The glass on my bedroom window is frosted. The light comes in patchy. Outside, I can see only shadows. Short and stout from parked cars on the street. Tall and brown from the few winter trees. Thank you very much. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about your writing? About how long, you know, how long you've been writing for and why you write? Um, I think I've been writing in French since I was very little. Um, I can't really remember a time where I wasn't writing. Um, and I think when I started writing as a child, or not so much writing, but I think I discovered at some point that I could create worlds, like conjure up worlds out of nowhere by just putting words after one another. And I really liked that because it made me feel like a, a witch or something. Um, and then I wrote on and off um, in French till maybe I was 22. Then I stopped for a bit because I think I needed to be more in the real world rather than the fictional world for a few years, almost like recharging batteries because I knew I was going to go back to writing, but I wanted to experience those of self so then I could put them down into words. Um, and I started writing in English about three years ago. Um, yeah, and that's when I started taking it more seriously. Fantastic, thank you. Um, do you have any tips for any budding life writers out there? Um, yes, I would say work as hard as you can. Um, accept the fact that your first draft will probably be rubbish and that's okay, because it's okay to have 15 different drafts um and then i think hope for the best uh because it seems so you know random i mean there's a part of randomness of what the readers like uh what you know what piece gets picked up where and i think for me it, there's no good or bad writers there's good or bad pieces and i think it's important to realize that just because a piece can't find a home it doesn't mean it's a flaw with you as a writer maybe the piece just needs more work very very wise thank you 
And um, my last question for you is, who are your writing inspirations? Um, my writing inspirations would be a lot of French writers, um, 20th century French writers, Marguerite Dura, um, Claude Simon, um, even Barjavel, people like that. Um, and then, but I'm also trying to keep, um, you know, keep up to date with English, Anglo-American writing. So I think in contemporary English language writer, I would say Carmen Maria Machado. Um, I really like, um, and I also really like a lot of the new female writers who write a lot of interesting short stories, um, like Sophie McIntosh and people like that, who I think are doing interesting things with um, dystopian feminism and I don't know, yeah, interesting genres. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much um, for your time today, Laurent. Um, uh, if you would like to read um, For the Flesh is Sour in full, you can do on the Spread the Word website in the Life Writing Prize 2020 anthology. Um, huge thanks to Michelle, our BSL interpreter today. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.